So, thanks very much for being here. My name is Bruno. So, uh, I'm the chairman from the Guarantee Scheme. So, we are working on the debt side of the project. This means that we are giving uh, collateral, we are giving some guarantees to the bank uh, for the loan of SMEs and startups. So, my presentation will be more theoretical. I will come back to the fundamental of the pitch. My goal is to, go, to cover this in 20 minutes, so it's not possible. So I will go as far as possible. Nevertheless, you can have the better group for the slides. I will transfer the, those slides to, uh, to them. So that's what I will try to do. What context, eight key steps, the essential, what should be in your pitch absolutely, and then uh, common mistakes, the kind of things I've seen in the pitch those last six, seven years, and that you should try to avoid. What happened if you've been good? and some other reason to prepare, to prepare a pitch. Because pitch is a fantastic test for you, for example, your value proposal, uh, your business model, and things like that. So pitch is not only interesting to try to attract people, to attract the interest of some people in your, uh, in your project, but also to test some uh, interesting, key essential things in your, uh, uh, in your uh, project. So it's okay. So my source are coming, are coming from the Entrepreneurship Development Program from the MIT, from Beloda and Kenmore. That's where I really learned to pitch. That's where I made my mistakes also. And uh, part of my slides come from Bill Oden. So pitch comes from the marketing world. You all know it, it's, in, it's part of your culture, so I will not come back to the pitch. Just that there are some different pitches. There could be some uh, elevator pitch. You heard about it. What's an elevator pitch? You know what's an elevator pitch? Um, how long does it last? One minute, 50 seconds max. When we do the, uh, the programs at the MIT or the 50K or the 100K, it's 50 second elevator pitch. And it's also the fantastic test for the value proposal. Even if you are not able to sum up the customer pain, to sum up the, uh, the customer care, the, the care you bring to this customer pain and the business model in 55 seconds, you're dead. And it's terribly difficult. So. Pitch is not a presentation, uh, it's a short presentation, it's definitely not a complete story. When I heard uh, uh, the, the previous pre uh, presenta uh, presentator talking about the, uh, uh, you know, people talking about technology, what we used to say at MIT is that you, you just allow to say one time the word technology, not a second time. And sometimes I've seen people, you know, falling again and again on the technology trap and don't realizing that the people in front of them were finance guy interested about the money. Where is the money? Where are the sales? Or could be the sales? And they don't care about the technology. They are here to invest in a venture. So, okay, say a few words on, on, uh, about the technology. If you, we, if you are with uh, uh, geek and techie investors, you can eventually develop a little. But don't follow the trap. That's not what I expected from an investor to talk in detail at this stage about the technology. You will have to demonstrate that you are able to deliver, but that's not the place to talk about technology. Okay? So one other interesting thing is that it creates action. What's the outcome of a normal pitch? From your point of view. On off. What's the normal result of a pitch? An interesting appointment. So you immediately know if you succeed or not. It's on off. You get the appointment with Mr. Big, with the interesting guy, or you don't have it. So it's a very easy to control. So that's the problem when uh, we have some uh, people not ready, re not absolutely ready. You know, they still have to think about their model, about their product, but they go to the pitch. You know, they don't care so much about obtaining this this uh, uh, this uh, appointment with Mr. Big, and then we call it fishing expedition. Please, if we work together, let me know if you are in a fishing expedition or if you want to get an appointment with Mr. Big. All right? So, we talked about that pitch. It can either be two minutes, four minutes, 10 minutes, the Q&A. Uh, whatever you, uh, you are asked for, if it's five minutes here or four minutes, I don't, I don't remember, uh, give a try on the 55 seconds. You should be able to play the 55 seconds elevator pitch and your grandmother should be able to understand what you have to offer or your little nephew. It's a great test. When you are able to explain to your grandmother in 55 seconds what you have to offer and the customer pain you solve, then you are ready to go to, the, uh, to a pitch, to an elevator pitch with an investor. That's the first step. It means that to reach that point, you have been working like crazy to synthesize 
your value proposal to perfectly understand a customer pain from that customer in those precise vertical of market, and then you will be able to be clear in your pitch to an investor. Okay? Um, if it's a real pitch, you know who's Mr. Big. You know that guy in the room. You have made some research, and most of the time in Europe, the people, they go to the pitch and they don't know who they're talking to, they don't know who they will pitch to, they, know the, they don't know the interest of the guy, they know, don't know the amount of money they are ready to invest, they, know, they don't know the previous investment. If you do that in the United States, you, you go in a cocktail and you want to talk to that guy, because that guy has done a series of investment in the same sector as you are, he has a good knowledge of the market, he will not only give you money, but he will give you some tips, some introduction. He will bring some, some uh, CFO, some sales guy in the business. So if you really want to have the money, you have to be able to know who you're talking about. Okay? I will go quickly and decide anyway you will, you will have it. So talk to your grandmother, your granny, or your little nephew about... Uh, so what is not a pitch? It's not a technical description of your product or technology. We talked about it. It's not a childish attempt to persuade. You don't want to persuade. You want the guy to have the conviction that there is a customer pain, you are able to solve it, you know about the kind of guy having that customer pain. You should be able to deliver who you are. You are a team, you're not a lonely wolf. Investors are not investing in lonely wolf uh, venture. Huh? And then, what are you asking? That's, that's, your really, that's the goal. And this is not a process of seduction. It's more convincing. Convincing, and to convince you need two things: the respect of the people you're talking to, plus, you know, the conviction that you are patient also and consistency. I will come back to this. So, what's the what do you think in a pitch? Very important thing in the pitch. First, the customer pain. If you're not able to talk about the customer pain, forget about the pitch. Then I I would come back to the introduction of. What I like in the introduction of the pitch, it's what we call the book. It's a question. If we would be able to solve that tricky problem, you know because you are in the business, would you be interested to talk about it? She only can ask, yes, of course. That's the introduction of the pitch. And that's all in an elevator pitch of 55 seconds. You can introduce the customer pain easily. And then you go back to the, uh, to the, uh, the value proposition. And then there is a big difference. I'm ready to do it. I don't know if some of you have studied the, uh, um, the case uh, Spotfire. Have you ever heard about Spotfire? Visualization tools, uh, softwares, fantastic software. They burn a lot of money because they didn't have a vertical of market. If I'm giving you money, or if an investor is giving you money, I want to know precisely what is your target. I want to know the segment. I want to know the size of the segment. Why? Because I want that you spend only a little money to demonstrate that you are able to sell to this target. What you guys usually do is that you try several segments and say, hey, my product is fine, I can sell it in B2B to that kind of company, that kind of company, in the pharma, in the chemical, in the banking sector, and I'm convinced I can bring value to all the sectors. As an investor, I'm running away. I want you to choose one vertical and let me know why do you choose this vertical. Why? Because you are creating a higher value in this vertical, because this vertical has specific customer pain, you know you've been studying, and you are able to solve this, uh, uh, this, uh, this customer pain in this vertical. This means that in probably one month or two months of cash burning, you can demonstrate if you are able to sell to this vertical, and what's the time to uh, the sales cycle, and how much money I can expect from my investment back. If you try to fish in a lot of different sectors, you will burn a lot of money before validating the business model, before validating the value proposal. So I will be interested, I will be interested in a quantified value proposal. What's a quantified value proposal? In the software, in the Spotfire cases from Harvard, the guy was, sell, was trying to sell software to uh, uh, companies like banks, uh, chemical companies, uh, uh, drugs, uh, you know, uh, pharma companies to help uh, reducing that, uh, the increasing the efficiency of uh, research and development. And he, he, they sold some software, and he was seen as a cost. We talk also about the decision-making unit when they were trying to sell. He was selling to the uh, 
uh, to the guy in charge of the, in the high team. So for this guy, it was an extra cost. When the new investor came in software, in Spotfire, they said, stop, you quantify the value proposition with a, a, a very strong business case. Jesus, if you have a business case and a validated test case with your product, you have to talk about it in the, in the elevator pitch. Because you're avoiding some question about the validation of the business model. So coming back to the decision maker unit and Spotfire, what they did is they identified the uh, head of research and they did a quantified value proposal. They said, we've been studying your uh, business case in the pharma and we can demonstrate that we can increase the efficiency and the productivity of the researchers from 3%. This means that you could reduce uh, the cost and increase the, uh, you know, the profit and so on. And it was demonstrated with a test case with figures. So it was not a cost anymore, it was an investment. So when you are pitching a customer or when you are pitching an investor and you are able to demonstrate you have a quantified value proportion, proposition, it's much more interesting, okay? So context, know your customer, that's the basis, why? Current pain, latent pain, you know, you have to identify, quantify, developing, uh, you know, the latent pain. Sometimes when you have, you have some very new products, the pain is not existing, it's not, it's hard to, uh, to explain. So it's a latent pain that takes more time. It's risky in the pitch, okay? Uh, know your clients basic two market segmentation. I talked about it. I'm, I assume as an investor that you have identified market vertical and you are able to tell me, yes, we choose this vertical because this has a link to what I'm doing. This has a, a link with what my cust those kind of customers have as a problem, all right? Then you choose a vertical market in relation to your offer resource and competences in relation to the market, custom, customer pain, tendency wave, interest of the time and, and, and do some questioning. You have to make some inquiries. It must be, you have to demonstrate it, it's the one, okay? Value proposition, you have to demonstrate you, the perception of the value for the client. So we use PPI6, it's uh, price, products, access, service, and experiences. Usually that's, if you talk about a value proposition, that's usually what's in a value proposition. Watch out about software, I, who knows Levit? Let me explain it when you have a software, there are a lot of extra tasks, packaging, uh, whatever, you know, uh, maintenance, a lot of extra services that you are, uh, and we have fantastic cases at the agency of uh, fantastic technology, and the guy burned cash for six years to, de to develop all the other things linked to the, uh, to the product, okay? Be careful to the Swiss life syndrome. As an entrepreneur, you, as a starting businesses, you have scar scarce resources and time, so you have to make choices. I see too, many, too often people coming with a Swiss knife. A lot of value, and we are the best in this and this and this. The client, you yeah, won't right. pay for all those value, okay? So, unique selling proposition. I will, you will read the slides. Quantified value proposal, we talked about it. Um, how to fix price, okay, you know, there are plenty of, uh, uh, you know, literatures about this. DMU, we talked about it. Uh, who's going to, you got a choice? As an investor, I want to know who's the DMU and if you have access to those guys. That matters. And then if you have a test case, fantastic. We love that. Um, baseline, okay. I come back, I go back to the key steps. First phrase, first phrase, oh, it's a close question as I ask you. You start with the customer pain. If you want, if you can ask one question, to the investor or to the people you are selling the product about the customer pain, and it's obvious that he can only say yes, and when he's answering yes, he say yes, there is this customer pain, and I feel like having it myself, or having the experience of such a pain, okay? Then there's a close answer. There is yes or no, and you can go ahead. You don't come back to at this stage on the customer pain, okay? That's called the hook. Explain the problem, pain, need that your enterprise wants to solve or need. Your drug tool will project itself or at least understand the value of your proposal. Okay? That's the hope. Very funny exercise. We can play together after you explain me the product. I try to find I, I try to find the hope. Second phrase, my solution. Okay? Explain how you will solve the customer pain. Then you talk a little about the product or the service, but not on technological data or whatever. You talk about how you solve it for the customer. Because with your hook. You put your customer in the problem. You 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 picture that when you pitch the guy you're pitching in the problem. So you think about 
solving the, pr the pr its problem and not talking too much about the product and the services. Okay? And then the guy must understand the value, of course. Third phrase, the customer. Q pitching the investor, okay, I, I, buy the, I buy the customer pay. That's fine. Fine for them. Then you go back to the solution. Yeah, okay, that's, that guy's, they seem to have something curing that problem. Then, okay, who's the customer? You go back to the vertical problem. Okay? Then I assume to, to, to here, okay, we tested your product or services to two or three verticals. We realized that this market is more, and then you explain why you choose that customer, that market. Easier, easier access than another, people having a higher uh, customer, uh, uh, customer pain, or you know the adoption rate of this kind of sector for new technologies, for example. You have plenty of reason to demonstrate that based on your resources and competences, you made the right choices. And this made that the, this right choice will give you more chance to succeed. Okay? If possible, you have a market test or any kind of other test. If possible, show a letter of intent from clients. Okay? It means that you go, sometimes you have techies and think they, they don't know anything about the customer. They never talk to a customer. They, they like the technology and they concentrate on the technology. I like to see some reaction for clients or, or potential clients. Okay, fourth phrase, where is the money? How will you make money? Then we talk about the business model. Briefly describe the business model, how will you capture and deliver the created value? So you remember this model, huh? It's creating value, uh, delivering value, capturing value. Then it's a, it's a kind of, uh, of nice circle. You at least must be really easy <coughs> with those three levels. Don't talk too much about the creation of the value, we talked about it before, but talked about delivering and capturing value. And then, once again, you have a choice. And I'm expecting that you are able to tell me, we, cho we choose that model because. Okay, strategy is always why, why, why. There are no strategy if there is not an option. Yeah. Fifth race, and, and then we defer a little. That was the, that's the pitch for an elevator pitch. Huh? That's 55 seconds, so who are you? Explain who you are, not alone the wolf. We talked about it. Are you an inventor? Are you a manager creating a business? Or are you a seasoned entrepreneur having a lot of experience? Okay? And then, who is in the team? And, and I really want to be convinced when you, uh, when, when you finish your pitch that you should be able to deliver what you say. There are, there are some chances that you'll be able to deliver what you say, right? Uh, I like the UCA. Ask yourself if you have a UCA, it's an unfair competitive advantage. Okay? It's, it's funny, it's a funny expression, unfair competitive advantage. You know Michael Porter, or you don't know Michael Porter, yeah. uh, and, and this guy talked about a, a competitive advantage. It can either be a resource, it can be either a positioning or an execution. What is your unfair competitive advantage? What do you, why are you bringing more uh, on the market than a competitor? And who are the competitors? That's the next point. Where are, where's the competition? So, trust me, uh, and then you have the closing. You have to close, and if that's exactly what, what you said, it's really, you must ask something. And uh, I've been in the pitching uh, a jury for uh, uh, EIBI in Endoven, uh, in Tias Nivas, for Philips, and I've been uh, also at MIT and in Quebec. And very often the people, when they are training, they don't know what, they don't want to know, okay, they are f doing fishing expedition, or, they want, would like something, but they know, don't know precisely what. And as an investor, I want to know how much, and I want to know to do what. At which stages are you? At that time, you told me, okay, we are at this stage, we need that much money to do that. Then, I will know, is the sector interesting for me? Do I have experience if I'm an investor? Uh, what about the money? Is it a range of money that I'm, uh, that I'm comfortable with? I, I, am I investing at this stage? Do I feel uh, enough experience to be able to invest at this stage or not? Or I will wait for sales. Okay? And then, really, how to induce a follow-up concretely, you must make a, a, pro a proposal. And this proposal can be either, can, I have, can we see each other at your, at your office uh, uh, next week to talk about it? That's the usual closing. And trust me or not, it fits in 55 seconds. If you are able to fit this in 55 seconds, you feel really comfortable about the customer pain. 
You can sensitize your value proposal in my solution. And it's easy because you know the customer pain very well and you know what Okay, so I quickly go to through my other the slides. Um, vital contents. I put your slide with the vital content that should fit in your should be in your uh, uh, in your page. The hope we talked about it. The duration. That, uh, that's on based on the elevator page. The value, the passion. You know, a clear demand. I want to know exactly at which stage you are and what you want. Okay. Uh, pay attention to poor point and business plan of 75 pages. Okay, that's not that's not at this stage. Some basic principle: exercise you in French, English, Dutch. Know your prospect, who you're talking about. Tell who you are straight off. Arouse the prospect interest. Take care of the details too, or you at least you should be ready to ask any kind of detail or to tell. At this stage, we have some option and we haven't choose yet. Uh, stay simple, pay attention to, to figures, if you put figures in the, in the board points. Uh, learn from your previous pitch. You're going to get smacked plenty of times. Learn, learn, learn the reason. Yeah. And ask yourself if you were really ready of it or, or if it was sufficient expedition. Be careful because investors in such a small country, they know each other. So if you really screwed up uh, and you know, waste the time of the, uh, of the entrepreneurs, uh, you better be careful. Um, that's all I need to do is make a presentation and give the demo. It will blow it away. As soon as I get in the door and explain technology, they will buy. Okay, that yeah. unfortunately doesn't add on that. Mistake. Talk about technology. Talk too much about yourself. Lack of empathy. I was, in my first uh, pitch myself, I was, I prepared too much. So, the guy was asking questions. I, I didn't care about the question of the guy. I wanted to get back on my format and my presentation. So I like empathy. I was badly noted on empathy. Uh, if you don't, if you don't prepare, that's a, you know, crash for sure. Waste time of the guy. It's irrespectful if you're not prepared. If you waste the guy's time. Lack of confidence. Fishing expedition. We talked about it. I give you some details about those mistakes. If the business model is com too complex, sometimes we have complex business model. More and more, no, you are building your project with partners, and then the model is complex. Then use graph, and then, if it's still too complex, tell a story. Tell the story of the time, to interest the, the, the audience. If it's too complex, tell a story, okay? Mm -hmm. Only two things matter, oh, you enter the room and oh, you leave the room, so. <laughs> it's, it's, okay? If you've been good, I'll let, I'll leave you this slide. Plenty of other reasons to present to prepare the pitch. Learn the structures, sensitize the dynamic of the key success factors. Good synthetic value proposal. It's a great exercise. It's, it's gonna, if you prepare for a pitch, you know, with your team, it, you will create a lot of value in the company, in the project, okay? All right. Uh, then I have some other slides in the value proposal to uh, remind that we don't have the time to do it. I stop here, and then I take question if you want, and uh, 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 I will give the uh, slide to the beta group so uh, you can download it. All right? Thank you.